What's up? What's up? Sorry that I'm a little late. Things happen. Life happens. Uh, super excited for today's class. I got a special guest with me. Uh, I'm going to be cutting some hair. She's going to be guiding me along a little bit. So uh, super excited for today. If you guys are as excited as I am, make sure you hit the share button. Share it on whatever uh, social platform that you are on. I would really appreciate that. Also, um, say hey, say hi, say, say hello in the chat. Uh, I see all of you guys in here. What's up, Ashley, Sharon? Good to see you guys. Glennis, good to see you. Uh, Lynn, what's up? Kristen, what's up? Nim, good to see you. All right, guys. Also, if you're new to this show, if you've never watched this show before in your life, then type new in the chat so everybody can say hello to you. Uh, we're building a pretty awesome community. We're 31 episodes in. I'm doing this thing every single day at 12 o'clock. So welcome if it's your first time. And uh, welcome back if it's not. Um, all right. So I want to bring in somebody that's very special to our salon. Uh, she works in our salon, Danielle. What's up, Danielle? Let me put this off here. Hi. Uh, how are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> good. It's been like a month of Sundays since I've seen your face. It's crazy, right? <laughs> uh, I just lost my face. As, as you said that, my face went away. It's coming back. There we go. Um, so uh, Danielle's joining us today because um, first off, I'm going to cut some curly hair today, but I don't have a giant curly hair clientele, but I do love curly hair. It's one of my favorite things. So, uh, Danielle's, I'm bringing Danielle in for the brain and, uh, and then I'm going to try to use my hands to make, make some magic today as well. Um, so any questions that you guys have about curly hair, we're going to make that happen today. We're going to talk about it. Um, I've also got this, uh, lovely lady here. Let me see if I can hit this. Look at that. She's right here beautiful curly hair uh, that we're going to be cutting today and uh, we're going to have some fun. So Danielle, um, Danielle does work at our salon. Uh, we haven't been in the salon for almost three months. Pretty crazy. Uh, I yeah, actually haven't, we've had like a, a, a meeting, right? Um, yeah. Where we were face to face on, yeah, on the phone. <laughs> um, otherwise we're just texting. So uh, it's been pretty crazy. What have you been doing with your, uh, your time? during this whole thing? Lots of cooking, lots of cleaning. Okay. I've actually been going out and doing little nature hikes and stuff okay. with my mom. That's and good. Yeah, I forgot how great Cheesequake Park is. <laughs> and okay. I mean, just pretty much just staying in, sheltering in place, doing lots of puzzles, reading, yeah, Netflix, all the usual stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so what we're going to get into today, obviously I'm going to shape up this cut. I want to, uh, create, uh, obvi obviously there's no cut on this thing. So when we look at it, um, the, the model that we have here today, uh, just kind of has some crazy curl. Um, I did shampoo it. You actually had, uh, extensions in this, uh, mannequin. So <laughs> it was, um, yeah. you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. So it was actually a little bit of a process getting that out, Danielle. I'm not going to lie. So I, uh. I was practicing my feed in braids. Yeah, I love it. I love it. So, um, so what I want to kind of go over today and what we're going to do in this class is I want to shape all of this up. Uh, I'm going to do it section by section. I'm going to do it dry. Um, what's happened in the past and what I kind of want to talk to you about as well is um, I've done curly haircuts on this mannequin, uh, this specific mannequin, but every time I've done it, I've done it on wet hair. Um, and a lot of people, I get a lot of comments saying I would never cut that hair wet. So that's something I want to talk to you about a little bit um, as I get into it, because I'm not going to cut it wet today. And I've, um, you know, I, I'm going to do a technique where we kind of cut each curl individually. Um, and then we're going to go in and we're going to shampoo it and then restyle it uh, when we get done. So, um, so that's going to be the goal today. What do you have? What is your thought process on um, cutting this type of curl? If um, your client came in, this was the hair that they had, and they wanted it shaped up, what would be your process for that? For me, it really depends on like what length they're going for. So okay. if it's say something that's like a little tighter, more of a wedge cut, then yeah. with that, I usually do go in with it wet because I need a little bit more structure. I need that base for yeah. it to sit on top of pretty much just like your regular graduation. Okay. But so if, when it comes to longer lengths, then yeah, I do do like the curl by curl, like what you're going to do. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, so if they were going to wear it in more of a bob or wedge type style, you're saying you would cut this wet? 
Yeah, yeah. well, that's usually where, like, taking that horseshoe section, like you yeah. do with a lot of your haircuts. Right. And making that more structured underneath okay. and then more free form on the top. Okay. Very cool. So, um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to section it off. I'm actually going to kind of section off that U shape a little bit, start working from the occipital bone down. Um, so one thing I want you guys to, let me see if I can pull this up here. Um, here we go. Um, so one thing I want you guys to do is if you have a question, type Q and then put your question in the chat. So type Q and then your question. That way we can see it in the chat and I can pull it up so that um, either I or Danielle can answer it as we go. And that's all that we really ask. Um, so just let us know that way if you guys have any questions. Let's see. So far, um, here's a question. Let's see, Jess Mac. My 14-year-old daughter has... What is that name? Kiwi style curly hair. Can you read that, Danielle? Uh, what are best products oh. for curly hair? She's <laughs> stubborn and doesn't. A. So I'm not sure where we're at with that question, but uh, Jess, thank you for the question. Do you know what person she's talking about? Do you know? Mayori. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you swatting away? <laughs> um, nobody. Nobody. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, anyway, all right. So we'll, we'll go back to that. I'm not sure the person that they're referencing. So, um, we'll have to go back to that. Do you know, Danielle? No, I'm not familiar with that one. Okay, cool. So, uh, why is Danielle so awesome? Well, that's very nice of you, Katie. <laughs> uh, I need to cut my own curly hair. Should I do it myself? You know what's funny about looking up curly haircuts is that um, so much of it is done on themselves, right? So like most, like that's kind of another reason why I wanted to do this is because when you watch any tutorial on YouTube, it's basically somebody doing it on themselves, literally pulling out each individual curl and cutting it. Um, so, you know, just to have a little bit more organization, I can't even imagine trying to cut and shape uh, curly hair in the back, especially, um, or any hair in, in general, um, on myself, but let's see. All right, Jessica, uh, those of you guys that are just joining, we are going to shape up this curly head. Uh, we're going to focus on, here, let me, I got so many cameras today. I want to keep Danielle in the picture too. All right. So um, we're going to shape up this curly head. What I want to do is kind of tighten in, take the shape in a little bit, especially in the back here. She's got almost like uh, these long kind of straggly pieces. So I want to shape that up. I'd like to bring this shape almost in a little bit and then out and create tons of volume on the top. And then in the very front, we're going to create a fringe to just give it almost like a shag effect, which I really like. I like that big curl uh, and then sleeker shape at the bottom. That's the goal. That's what we're we're going for today. All right. And Danielle, if you see me do anything silly, just call me out, all right? What are you here for? I mean, I have your permission and everything, <laughs> but that's kind of nerve-wracking to call out the boss. <laughs> Trust me, nothing, nothing. Uh, I need it. I need it. All right. So we're going to go in. Uh, I'm going to, I got a couple clips here, but most of what I'm going to do is with my hands. So what I want to do is I want to separate... Uh, some of this curl, I'm going right at the occipital bone uh, across because that's really, I still want to work with head shape. Um, and when I talk about other haircuts that I do, um, I go through and I cut it from the occipital bone because that's where the head starts to curve back away. So I want to do the same thing when I section this hair away as well. So we'll clip it up and away. We've got our first little section makes things for me a little less daunting as I'm going through this curly hair is just a section it uh, separate it section by section. We'll clip it up in a way. All right. So now when we talk about cutting individual curls. What I want to do is see, I've got all of these kind of individual curls throughout it, right? So I'm going to go in with my scissor and I'm just going to start cutting. So I want to shape up the bottom. So we'll hold these little curls in our hand. I'll pull them down one by one and I want to decide my length. So I get my length here. And then what I want to do is I kind of want to work this shape up 
are in first and then out, if that makes sense. So now what I'm going to do, let's see, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Got to get some, uh, some good vibe tunes going. Can't cut hair in the quiet. So now what I'm doing is I'm stretching out the curl, um, but I'm aware of where it's going to spring back to. So I stretch it out and I cut it and it pops in. Do the same thing here, just shaping it up. So I pretty much do the same thing as you, where like yep. every time that I would make that cut, I would give it a little bit of fluff just to see exactly where it's gonna shrink back up to. I like that. And that then just making sure that it's like not too much tension, because if you're straightening it out completely, Right. then you might cut off more than you, <laughs> you intended. Might bite off more than you can chew kind of thing. Yep. So instead the of shrinkage is real. pulling it, right, instead of pulling it nice and hard and, and cutting it, just slightly kind of bring it out and cut into it. Exactly. What you been doing? All right. <laughs> so far, so good. One of my favorite things about curly hair is the fact that um, I don't experience it as much. So it's, it's new to me. It's exciting. Um, for me, like I don't really get, I've never gotten nervous about cutting hair for some reason. I don't know what it is. I've jacked up some hair. Um, so I'm not saying that like I have reason to be nervous, but at the same time, well, if we're like, all honest, we've all done it. <laughs> right. We've all jacked it up. But, um, what I like about, uh, curly hair is that it's what you see is what you get really, um, as you're cutting through it. So, uh, being able to create a shape on it and actually see it form before your eyes. It's kind of a false shape when you cut a bob, right? Um, when I cut a bob, it's like, okay, cool. Now I have to blow it dry to expand it, if that makes sense. Nope, totally. I love the fact that with curly hair, you literally can make just about any geometric shape yeah. that you want. So... I would say that it's easier for people to see round, square, and triangle when it comes to, you know, like Afro texture or however you want to put it. Yeah. Sectioning off the top here. I'm just peeling it away with my fingers. I'm not trying to be too precise. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Danielle, but I'm not trying to be too precise with my sectioning, just in the general area of where that section is going to live. Nope, I agree with that. Cool. Some of you OGs of the show will notice that there's some new tunes today. Had to change it up. I was getting a little bored with the other music. All right, so look at the shape here. Um, so what we're starting to, I still want to cut into this, and this is obviously the new section here that's coming over, but I want to shape that up. Uh, but I still want to start collapsing a little bit, and then the volume I want to start about halfway into this section. So um, that's what I'm going to be working on now. All right. Let's see here. And what's crazy, Danielle, is like I would have went tease cutting uh, originally. Like before mm. doing a little bit of research and stuff, I would have been tease cutting this. But I love the fact of a blunt cut because um, it kind of... It just gives it more of a precise look and less shattered edges. Exactly. I mean, the hair is going to be under a lot of stress anyway, depending on like somebody's moisture level. There might be a lot of split ends, breakage, ponytails and things like that can cause it. Yeah. So I don't mind a blunt edge. Some people that want a little bit more of like a finer point or a little serrated edge if you were to actually twist that section a little bit and then slide cut down okay then you can create a little bit more of a tapered end rather than a blunt edge okay i like that so if i grabbed like some of this and i worked into it a little bit more is that what you're saying exactly okay and you know just the same way that we would do a twist cut yeah so like you would twist the hair like that and then mm -hmm. cut into it. 
Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Okay, cool. Like it. So it's nice because you can attack it from a couple of different angles. And just for me, I always like to keep everybody in the mirror so that way I can see the shape as it's starting to, to come about. Yeah. Some people call it topiary cutting okay. and they don't like it or rizo cut or whatever you want to call it. But seeing as how each individual curl can be different, like for me, the back of my head is a lot tighter. So if I were to take, you know, even a half of the amount of tension that I would in the front, then my curl is going to spring up a little right. bit more and it's going to okay. be closer to my head. Whereas the front is going to be a lot longer. So you got to kind of adjust with each section. I actually did notice that about this, this doll head even, um, that the texture of the bottom is completely different than the texture on the top. The texture on the top is uh, more like... Um, coarse feeling and yeah. this had a much smoother curl on the bottom and that could have been my styling of it but uh it definitely felt more textured on the top or it could be that you know she's highlighted to within an inch of her life because i think i might have highlighted <laughs> that like five times yeah i it, she's <laughs> definitely highlighted that's for sure All right. but you know traditionally Everything that's underneath is going to be protected from like all the free radicals, UV light, most of your styling damage. So that's the hair underneath call. is just a lot healthier. Right. That's a good call. All right. So you can kind of see, let's see if we're where there's definitely a different shape going on here. So this is not cut yet. And this is where we're starting to shape everything. Um, that's really the goal uh, is to just get a nice clean shape on it and, and create and have fun with it. Um, that's what I wanted to do with it. And that's yesterday when I saw this mannequin, I was like, you know what? That would be really fun to cut. And then I got into it and started taking out all the extensions and everything that uh, Danielle had in there. And then I was like, all right. Uh, and then I started to blow it dry and started researching all the different styling techniques to get that really nice curl and then started texting Danielle because it just became a little, uh, you know, it's just not, this is not uh, the clientele that I get in the salon does not come in with this hair type. Uh, so like I said before, it's very fascinating to me. Um, but I like having Danielle on here because obviously she's an expert in this hair texture. Um, she has clientele with this hair texture. So, um, you know, you get the best of both worlds. You get me doing my thing and Danielle. Helping me out. Well, I mean, I'm honored that you say that I am a curly hair expert, but I would say that I'm more of a curly hair enthusiast because yeah. each head is so different. Right. And yeah. I'm still learning, basically. I mean, expert compared I... to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll take but that. But yeah, but I, I do agree. And, on, and you work at our salon as well. So it's a little bit, um, you know, you don't, have, this texture is not walking in the door every day. So... Well, that's the great thing is that you've talked about it so many times where depending on what you've got on your own head, that's the kind of clientele that yeah. you can attract. So I have had quite a few people that might see me out and about and it's like, oh, hey, where do you work? Do you deal with, right. you know, type C, type A, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> that is something I want to talk about, Danielle, is those different hair types. Um, but we're going to save that for when I go to shampoo. Okay. But, uh, but yes, you're totally correct. Like, um, understanding all of that. I'm going to turn this a little bit. So not a lot of tension, just kind of pulling it down, cutting through it, and working the shape. I got to be honest, with this music in my ears and cutting these curls, this is like literally the... It's like an ASMR kind of thing, right? Oh my gosh. I don't even know what that is, Danielle, <laughs> but yes. <laughs> oh my God. You've never heard of that? No. What okay, is that? what about the beer commercial with Zoe Kravitz where she's like tapping the bottle and she's. Okay, no, you didn't see that one. No, never I mind. Didn't. I didn't. Danielle, but no, basically, no. it's an auditory thing. Oh, okay. a little bit of slide in there. 
I do like that weight line. You like that weight line? I figured... This is actually what I've been thinking about cutting on my own hair. And oh. I, every time that I do my hair and I go to cut it, I'm like, mm, do I want to? Do I want to lose that length? <laughs> it seems pretty popular online. That's kind of where I was when I was researching this shape with the big fringe too. Yes. Uh, was pretty cool. So getting it. So this is where I like to look in the mirror. So you guys are seeing... Uh, the second camera view here. Um, obviously, this is built up. I haven't cut into this yet. This is where we have cut. Um, you just got to be aware, uh, and this is haircutting in general, of where that weight line is sitting. And then I like to bring up the hair right around the edge there. And then the other great thing is you can still do undercuts and things like that so that you can push some of the, the curl pattern. Okay. So just like what you would do with fine hair and graduating so that you can build up a weight line for the finer hair to sit on top of, you can do the same thing with finer curls. Okay. Where you can do it a little shorter on the bottom so that way it has something, a base to kind of sit on top of. I like that. This is what I'm really digging, this shape. Heaven seems fun. So not a lot of tension, guys. I think that was Danielle calling me out a little bit, but which is I good. most certainly did not. <laughs> no, it's a good. It's good. That's what I'm saying. It made make some adjustments. The I wasn't pulling with a ton of tension. I so you were right on that, but I was pulling with more than I am now, and I like the. Uh, the result that I'm getting. And I also feel like I'm getting a better shape by doing that, as opposed to when I was pulling with extra tension, I felt like it was springing back a little bit. Yeah, because like right now the curl is a little bit looser. So as soon as you go to wash it, it's gonna shrink up that much more. That's a good tip. So, you know usual cutting tip of less is more and especially with curly hair because what can measure out to be like six inches of hair can shrink up to about three or four inches all right all right cool brian harris says she's great <laughs> hey brian it's nice brian <laughs> All right, so now I'm going to take down another section here. Just go about two inches up. This is where I was saying the texture, like basically from Parietal Ridge up, was totally different. Um, and like you said, could be the bleach, could be the... Uh, maybe she didn't come that way, but makes it feel more real to me, I think. Go around. All right, well, I guess you're gonna be cutting my hair now, Matt, cause yeah. yep, I like that shape. That's the one that I've been looking at for like well, three hey, months. That's a good, uh, <laughs> it's the best compliment I can get today, Danielle. But the other reason that it's good that you're just separating rather than going in with the comb and trying to evenly section is because the curls, they all kind of, you know, they want to hug their neighbor. So if you try to go in there with a regular, you know, sectioning comb, then you're going to actually disrupt the curl yeah. and you might actually cause a little bit more, more tangling. That's actually, uh, that's such a good tip because in my thought process on this whole thing, that's why I'm not being too particular with, um, the actual section that I take either, like making sure like with, when I'm cutting straight fine hair, I'm taking very perfect sections. For me to this, in this, I'm, I'm going in, I don't care that this, there's no like visible parting in this. I'm just keep trying to keep it as balanced as possible uh, on the head. All right, so now I've got underneath here is my shape and here is my new curls. So what I'm gonna do is not pull it too much because I don't wanna pull out the curl. Uh, or disrupt the curl too much, but I do want to separate it and kind of put it where it's going to be. 
uh, or where I want it to be, I guess. So I'll work through it that way before I start cutting. Hey. Oh. <laughs> That's not a song. This is what, okay. so Christina and Hayden make fun of me a lot, a lot. Um, and one of the things, like, I think it was on my birthday, they showed me this video of this girl, and this is what she says. Hey. Want to be famous? She's, like, eating potato chips. <laughs> And they're like, this is dad. Like, this is my dad. So, yeah. Well, for a second there, because Christina is so good with, like, I don't know, kind of sounding like some of the sound bites. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was her. Yeah, it could have been. <laughs> yeah, that little girl's hilarious. It's a funny video, but it's not me, okay? It's not me. What, you don't want to be famous? No, I... I I would never eat <laughs> potato chips on camera. That's <laughs> that's the part that's oh, yeah. not me. Okay. No, I'm with you there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another reason that it's not really necessary to, you know, like take those perfect, precise little sections with the yeah. curly hair is that it's already got its own built-in volume. Yeah. So it's not like you're trying to over direct to create it. That makes sense. All right. This is, so we have a question, uh, Marianne here. Let's see. My question, how does this cut work for someone who may fully style slash straighten their hair occasionally? So Danielle, do you want to answer that? I have my thoughts, sure. but you answer it and I'll, if I have a different thought, I'll tell you. Okay. Well, whenever I used to straighten my hair, when um, I first started going natural, that's where obviously you're going to have some sections that are going to be maybe a tiny bit longer. Or there might be a little bit of asymmetry, but that's usually where I would go in and texturize the ends a little bit. So that way they're not too thick, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, that way when it's straightened, it doesn't have like that really thick um, weight line right at the bottom. Okay. It's a little bit flatter, bevels out a little bit more. And with what you're doing right now, you're pretty much rounding out the top of the head shape. So when it falls, it's actually going to be almost the same length as what's underneath because you use a lot more tension on yeah. the underside of the hair than you did the top. Plus, you know, as we said before, the shrinkage is real. Yes. For real. So now I'm just trying to get these ends because the ends are pretty roughed on the top. Plus I want to build a little bit of extra shift and volume and I don't need to pull the curl up and cut it like that. Um, I want to give this a little, and this is just my thought process. I want to give it a little more realistic kind of, um, just like I would cut fine, fine straight hair, thick straight hair, uh, just give it a little elevation, but really focusing on these ends because the ends are pretty rough here. We gotta make this look fresh. I mean, she's already looking brand new. You like it? All right. Getting there. Can't wait to wash it and style it up. Now, sometimes people worry about whether you get like a little bit of flat top, but usually after you're diffusing it, once it's completely dry, that's where you want to go in with, say, like a pick or even maybe a chopstick just to go in and give it a little lift from underneath. Okay. So sometimes it's a little misleading with the videos that you see because you see people like fluffing and all of that while they're diffusing. But, you know, the more you touch it, the more that it's frizzy. Right. So if frizz is okay for you, then go for it. But if not, and you're looking for definition, but still looking for, for height and volume, wait until it's completely dry. Okay. Like it. All right, let's see. And make sure, guys, if you have a question, put Q and then your question so I can see it. Because I do see some questions coming through, but um, sometimes it's harder to see them if you don't do that. Here we got a couple. Um, Rosanie's asking if a client that wears her hair curly and straight, would you cut curly or when it's straight? 
Um, I usually cut curly and then I refine it later on. Straight? Because, yes. Okay. So say that they usually wear their hair curly. Yeah. I usually ask people to come in with it parted however they normally do with as close to their, their first wash day kind of curl. Yeah. So that way I can shape it while it's curly. Then I'll wash it, go back in, refine the cut a little bit more to make sense out of it for when it's it's straightened out. Okay. I like that. Yeah, definitely a key thing is to have them come in with their hair in whatever natural state they're going to wear it. Um, because then you can go through, you can do this cut. And then if they're not going to wear it straight, then you could just then shampoo it, style it. But if you, uh, if they're going to wear it straight, I would do some refining for sure. And I'm definitely trying to keep as much volume as I can on top because I love it. And... Then I want to work that fringe in. And another option is that sometimes people will actually wait until after the hair has been dried to cut the fringe. So the that fringe. way, hmm, that's cool. You could do either or. It's just a, a comfort level thing. Yeah, what I'll probably do is just take the initial length of the fringe. And then cut it a little more when it's when we finish it. That's what I do. Yeah. Great minds think alike, Danny. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, this looks like my client Tyler's hair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the girl that I had chopped off all of her relaxed hair, and we just started from a little pixie. Okay. I know who you're talking about. This is what her hair looks like now. Yeah. I mean, not the color, but right. the shape. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go through the top, trim these ends, work them up. Cameras. And then sometimes people are afraid to use the thinning shears, and some people even think that you can't use a razor on curly hair, yeah. but you really can. Yeah, I talk about it a lot. Like, as long as you have a fresh blade, um, mm -hmm. It's just as strong as, as doing any, you know, you're not going to get as blunt of an edge though, but at the same time, it's a super sharp blade of razor. Exactly. And then some people, if you got like somebody with a really dense texture already and they do want to thin it out and, you know, reshape it to where it's a little bit finer, um, almost like you have those little cloud pieces coming off. So it's yeah. not so perfectly geometric. That's why I love the razor. I like it. It's pretty fun, to be honest. Once. For me, I don't think that you could go wrong with it. Yeah. Once I go through and I do all the individual curl cuts um, on the head, I like to just kind of then go through and dust all the edges a little bit. Maybe just because it visually helps me a little bit like with the, the actual shape, not having too much stuff shooting out everywhere. And then there's always like those little fine stragglers yeah. to clean up. So this was kind of the one thing. So what I really want and what I'm loving is I like, I do like this shape, but I feel like it's a little big here. So I want to make it a little sleeker in this area just for my personal taste and uh imagination now personally i love that just love because that i want 
I want hair big enough that I'm going to piss off the person in the movie theater behind me. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, I agree. I've got such fine hair. It's going away very slowly or quickly, whatever way you want to say it. So I'll never have that. Never. All right. So now just to go into the fringe a little bit, um, this is all going to be kind of part of that fringe. But I don't want... All right. Turn the music on so you can't hear my old knees cracking. <laughs> oh. Don't feel bad. I got the Rice Krispies knees too. Nice. All right, just pulling those individual curls out. Light tension. Working the shape. All right. Well, a fun thing is you can play with the tension on the top. So if you did have a couple of pieces that you were to pull taut and cut, then they'll spring down a little bit shorter. And okay. again, just make for like a little bit piecier of an appearance through the, the top layer. Oh, okay. I like that. All right, so in here, individual. Definitely aiming for longer than it is, or it's gonna be. And then sometimes even cutting a couple of shorter pieces right around the fringe. Like? Is an option. Well, just so that when there's a couple of little shorter pieces, not the entire fringe. Okay. But just a couple of shorter pieces help to just give it a little bit more fluff, if that makes sense. Yeah. So where would you take those shorter pieces? In the interior part here or around the edge? Um, depending on how much hair somebody has, I can do both actually. Like I have one lady that she's a little bit finer right through the front with her curl. So I usually just do a little bit of razoring underneath. So the carving comb with the 50% the side. Okay. I'll do that right around the, the perimeter. And then on the interior, I'll do kind of almost like a concave layer. So you could literally just take like a section and do 50% here? Mm -hmm. Yep, just through the ends. So like this, and then you take the carving comb with the 50% mm -hmm. carving side. And I'm just gonna hold it. I'm not gonna comb it all out or anything. And then just 50% through the ends. Oh, that's not a new blade. That's good though. I like it because it did take out just like every other little piece mm -hmm. and just softens it. You're right. It's not as thick looking too. All right. So I feel like we're almost there. I like this profile. I like that profile. Okay. All right. Me too. All right, Danielle. So what we're going to do is I want you to give everybody kind of breakdown. Okay, breakdown of like... Um, I'm gonna put up three mannequins, right? And then you can start talking about different hair, hair like uh, right. curl types, okay? Let me see. Okay, well, not everybody's into the curl typing. Can you see that? I just like it because oh, I can't. Okay, good. That's okay. <laughs> so here's this lovely lady. Okay. 
pretty sure you've done almost all these except for the last one. I'm not sure. Yeah, I have. So this one. Yep, that's all Danielle. And then this one's me. You haven't seen this one because you haven't. Oh, that one's new. Okay. Yeah. This one's shagalicious. There we go. All right, so we got the shag a few is very in. Few different curl types. So Danielle's going to give you guys a breakdown of that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to run and uh, shampoo um, our lovely model here so that we can start diffusing and going through the styling process of the hair. Um, and yeah, so that's where we're at. So Danielle, I'm going to let you just kind of give a breakdown while I okay. do that and I'll be back. All right. All Go right. Ahead. So the purple mannequin that for me on my screen is on the right. <laughs> <laughs> that one, it's obviously a looser pattern. It's more of like what you would call a type B because that one's a little bit more of a, a spiral type of curl. Now, when it comes to the typing, there's A, B, and C. So A being your more like, um, more wavier. And then your B being more of your starting to get spirally. And then your C would be a really tight spiral curl. So pretty much like my hair. And that's the hair that's on the left is your type C. So we're going from left center, I'm sorry, from the right to the center to the left is your ABC. And every curl pattern is pretty much different. Like I have a little bit of like a B pattern in the back of my head, but then the front of my head has a little bit more of like that combination of B and C. But I'm also like in my um, in my tension, it's a little bit different, if that makes sense. Because like right here, I'm a little bit lighter. So that one, it drops a little bit more, whereas the back is a little bit darker, so it shrinks up. So for me, when it comes to dealing with curly hair, I attack it like a Lego. It's all in different sections. And for the people that don't like to do typing, it's good to do the hair typing because then you can pretty much figure out what every one of them needs. So like for C, my type of curly hair, you're gonna need a lot more moisture. Some people think that means that you have to go in with a lot of oil, but what the oil is gonna do is put a coating on the hair. So essentially, you're just actually keeping the oil on the top of the hair and the water is not penetrating through. So that's where you get a lot of drying. So with that, I usually like curl creams and curl gels because they help to actually put a lot more moisture and define the curl a lot better with type C. When it comes to type A, that you usually want a little bit more of like your leaving conditioners and things like that because they're very soft. They won't weigh the hair down. And then when it comes to re-expanding the curl, it's a lot easier to manage. Now with B, seeing as how um, that one can be a little bit different, that's where you have that combination hair of dealing with like your gel plus your cream. Sometimes you could even do a mousse. So every hair is different. I wish that I could give one exact thing to do, but it's literally working with the hair and seeing what it likes. So I found that for my type C hair, which I'm 4C and combination 3C in the front, um, I use a lot more of like a curl butter. And all of these different products have different names, but I usually go by the lock method, which is a leave-in conditioner. Then you have an oil, although as I said before, you might not want to do the oil beforehand. So I actually do my leave-in conditioner, my curl cream, and then the oil. But basically, those are the three things that you're looking to, to do with curly hair. Is moisturize, define, and then lock in moisture. So one thing that I can definitely say with a lot of different curls is that the more that you touch it, the more that it's gonna frizz out. So you really wanna give it that time after you 
put the product in, especially if you're doing a wash and go, that you're going to rake through the hair, get it really defined. And then once you've got it where you want it, you usually sit somebody under a dryer for about like 10, 20, maybe 30 minutes, depending on how thick their hair is before you go in with your diffuser. Because if you go straight in with the diffuser, then you're going to end up with a lot of frizz which for me, it took a little while to kind of learn that with my own hair. But especially with the lockdown, I've had a lot of time to play around, do different things. And I have found that that's the best one that works for me and also for a lot of my different clients. So it may be a little bit slimy, it may be a little bit drippy, but that's pretty much the nature of the beast. So I always recommend that you have some type of a hooded dryer So that way it helps the process because you want the hair to have a little bit of a cast on it after, especially if you're using a gel. So you want it to be just a little bit crisp, but seeing as how you've had the leave-in conditioners and you've had the uh, curl butters and things like that, it does leave the hair very soft so that once it's dry, you can fluff it out without losing the entire curl pattern. Oh, hey, Matt. What's up? I'm back. All right, so no well, joke. That was quick. Yeah. Well, it's probably too quick. I probably should have uh, went a little slower, but, you know, we're live. So, um, so what'd you end up using? So I ended up using all lavender mint, uh, Paul Mitchell, everything. Um, not for any reason. I just feel like it's more moisturizing. Uh, loaded mm-hmm. it with conditioner. Uh, it definitely... And this could be because of highlights and all of that, but the texture on this top is absolutely 100% different than this texture on the bottom. You can see it. So um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in, um, like you said, it's hard for us at this moment to let this air dry for a little bit, um, just because we're obviously live on the internet, but um, I'm going to load it with product, correct? Well, when you're putting your product in, what yep. you usually want to do is have a spray bottle with you because you want to keep it on more on the wet side. Okay. So dripping is actually a good thing. Okay. And, and now- a lot of times we're used to like really squeezing out and wringing out the hair, but yeah. especially with this curl pattern, it needs a lot of moisture. Okay. And that way you're not using or wasting a lot of products. What about like the, um, like how do you keep from getting the tangle at the root? Like what's the goal there? Like if it seems Um, to tangle up easily. Usually it's when I'm in the, you know, at the bowl with their hair that I'll detangle there. Okay. And everybody's different because some people, they never, ever detangle whatsoever. Some people will only finger comb to get out the majority of like the loose hair and some of the tangles. Personally, I am loving this guy right here because this one's perfect because literally it just, it's made to actually stretch with the hair so it doesn't disrupt the curl. And just like you would with a regular detangling comb, you can go in vertically yeah, just to cool. detangle and then horizontally to get through everything. But I just like that it's not going to snap the hair because it's got like these little flexible separated pieces. So this has been like one of my COVID purchases. I like it. Where did and you purchase it at? Just off of Amazon. Okay. So now as I add in product, am, so that's kind of a, that's a, that's a great tip in the fact that, so some people don't even worry as much about like on typical like fine hair that I would be working with, I would um, most likely make sure no tangles are in there whatsoever. With this hair texture, I'm not as worried about that. Is that what you're saying? Um, it's, a, it's a preference thing. Because like okay. I said, there are some people that they don't mind having that. Me personally, I don't want my hair to dread. <laughs> right. My curl yeah. pattern does that really easy. So I do that when I'm doing my conditioning treatment or when I'm doing like um, just my once a week wash day, basically. Okay. So, but if I'm doing just a co-wash, then I'm just finger combing through it. Okay, very cool. And then, um, so as I put on the product, am I se- I'm sectioning it just like I would 
uh, when I cut it, right? Mm -hmm. And then I, I start look, putting the product in. Am I working that product through with the brush or no? You don't want to do no, that. No, that you want to work through with your hands. Just with my hands. Um, yeah. Because if you go through with the wrong comb or the wrong brush, then it's actually just going to explode that curl. Okay. So what I usually do is I'll just take like some little horizontal sections yep. and then just rake through that. Okay. So I usually start off with a leave-in conditioner. Okay. That's not what I did. <laughs> Work that really well. That's the opposite of what I put in here. But that's okay. Okay. So leave-in conditioner. It's going to go in there anyway. Right. So this is a very conditioning curl refining foam that I'm using, just in case you guys are wondering. Now, don't take, uh, I would like to hear Danielle's recommendations for you guys rather than what I'm putting in the hair. Um, some of your favorite things. So what conditioner do you like the most right now? Um, I flip flop back and forth between the, the Paul Mitchell lavender mint leave-in okay. and the conditioner okay. with Paul Mitchell. I really like the conditioner. Like some people are a little bit iffy because it, it, you know, like when you rub it together, it's a little bit white. And yeah. when it goes into the hair, it froths just a little bit. Yeah. But once it starts to dry, and especially once you start to diffuse, it pretty much disappears. It this just is, absorbs right into the hair. Is this the conditioner or the other one? The conditioner. The conditioner, okay. And I just find it has a, an easier slip. You know, you don't have to use as much. Yeah. Soak in the product. <laughs> All right. That's pretty much how it is. So usually when you are dealing with your curly hair clients, especially for somebody that has like the kinkier, coily kind of hair. Okay. You're going to want to cape them up really well. So. Okay putting a towel around, giving them a towel so that they can nicely blot and everything. Okay. It's, it's definitely normal. Like that. But like I said, it's a lot easier to work with the hair if it's soaking wet. Okay. And if you had, um, like, let's say this spot right here, super tangled right here at the root, you would have done that at the sink, correct? You're saying? Yes. Okay. And you can still do that right now. Yeah. It's just you're really going to have to get in there, spray a lot of water. Yeah. And um, then you're going to go through and just rake through with your hands. Okay. Cool. Like all these tips, Danielle. Keep dishing them. Like it. All right. Well, hopefully I'm not jumping all over the place because, I mean, with curly oh, hair, there know. is just so many different things. Not to mention, I just like to over-inform. That's my thing. Yeah, I love it. That's why I have you on here because um, I like to over-inform as well, but... Um, obviously this not being my expertise, I needed an over informer by my side. So, and the great thing is once you get back in the salon, obviously, um, we're going to, you'll be jumping in on these classes as well. Uh, helping me out doing all kinds of different stuff. Cause you're uh, super talented at all, all hair types. Well, so you. we'll be doing <laughs> all kinds of things. Um, so with that, I would wet the top down a little bit more. Right. And for those sections, you can go in with your paddle brush just okay. to, you know, lightly comb through some of that to get out the worst parts of the, the knotting. This is where I'm going to get it. It's going to be very exposed right here. My shampoo job, I bet you. <laughs> hmm. All right. Because seeing as how you've only put in the mousse, you yeah. know, you're still going to be able to clump the curls with, you know, the, the curl cream and okay. the defining gel. Okay, cool. Which I got to say, their defining gel is like, whoa. Well, that's good. I did, I used the, uh, for my initial style, I used the, um, the cream, the curl cream. Is it the taming cream you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I used. I like it a lot. It's got a great lavender scent too. But you're right to yeah, sleep. Yeah, it's not overbearing. No. And it's nice because it's not like you have to use a whole lot of it. And the way that you use it, it 
it'll give you different types of holds. It'll even change the curl pattern, like kind of like the gel is going to elongate it a little bit more. Yeah. So like, that's pretty much what I did with my hair today okay. was just to go through. I did a 50, 50 kind of mix. So that way I still had some movement. I could still touch it, but I still had definition and volume to it. Okay. I like that. And while you were gone, I was saying how, when you have that, that gel that you're going to add to it just to get that extra definition that it's okay to have it just a little bit crunchy and have a cast because as you start playing around with it and touching it, it'll expand and it'll still keep the actual curl pattern. Okay, very cool. So uh, Kristen's asking, uh, if you keep it wet during the product application, do you towel blot after? I don't know if we touched on that. Everyone is different with that. When it comes to the coily textures, I wouldn't do the microfiber. Okay. towels when it comes to your wavy or um your wavy or, or curly shapes that yeah. one i'll do the microfiber towel okay and there really is a difference between the microfiber and a regular cotton towel because the cotton towel will actually just pull out way too much moisture but because it's a natural fiber it's just going to latch on to that that curl pattern shape okay. and create frizz Everyone's freaking out about your brush. They want to know where to buy it again. <laughs> Amazon. Um, What's it called? Do you know what it was called? It, it didn't have a name. Okay. It, I just saw this thing and it was advertised for natural hair. And it was just like the best thing. And seeing as how it's, you know, like you can see that it's pretty wide, pretty long. You can get huge sections all in one go. So what would normally take me? like a good 15, 20 minutes to detangle my hair. Now it takes me about like 10. That's awesome. So that compared to a wet brush, you're like all in on that. Oh yeah. Cause the okay. wet brush, I can't tell you the amount of brushes that I'm combing through. And then it's like, Oh, the paddle is, it's stuck in my hair. <laughs> well, that's not or good. I've completely broken the thing off. It's, but you have no idea how many 427 brushes. Okay. I have destroyed. All right. Oh, that's good to know. All right. So I got the, um, this is the defining gel. So we talked about mm -hmm. that a little bit. Uh, a lot of people in the chat were saying this is one of their favorites. Yes. So am I putting this on or do I put the conditioner on? Do you think maybe conditioner? So I would say put the conditioner. Yeah. Cause that you can at least spray. Oh, you wasted it. You could have stick. Oh, Matt. <laughs> uh, I'm a very wasteful person. Oh, blasphemous. Right. Blasphemous. That's not good. All right, so this is the taming cream. So we'll put this in. Uh, yeah, sound good? Yep. Now, normally I like to work in sections so that way I can saturate them a little bit better. So like I would literally take just like a okay. little subsection. Don't judge my roots. I haven't bothered with them. I might go back to gray. Hey, that might make everybody else feel better. So don't be afraid. <laughs> Show them roots. All right. And then if you feel like the hair is drying out, like you can almost feel like a little bit of sliminess as you're going through and raking. So if it feels like it's drying out and it's almost feeling like a little cottony, <laughs> okay. there's no other way to say it, then you can spray it down a little bit more and then rake through again. Okay. And perfect rake method. Very good. Just go in there, all raptor claw. <laughs> raptor claw, I like it. All right, all right, all right. It's good, we got some good comments. People are saying finally curly hair cutting. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, like I said before, there's so many different ways. So it's not that you were doing anything wrong, it's just yeah, I think that was a me, more structured haircut. Yeah. And it's like understanding it, you know, like when you're not exposed to something, um, like I wasn't exposed to cur this type of curly hair, um, at all, like my whole career, you know? So 
um, being able to just work with it. I think having this mannequin is awesome because um, it's obviously a daunting thing for people that have never, um, you know, like have never, like if you have a client, obviously it's a lot more, it's a lot scarier. I would be probably nervous because I just don't want to mess anybody's hair up. You know what I mean? With the mannequin, yeah. it's a, it allows you to have discoveries. Like yesterday, messing around with it. Um, I've obviously used this mannequin before. Um, and I listened to the comments of the past videos that I've made. And, you know, it's just a different, um, it's, a, it's a different experience, but it's not that different. And then when you watch on YouTube, it's cool because you can really, even if you watch somebody do their own hair, you learn a lot about just different tips of the adjustments that you make as a hairdresser. So uh, like we were saying, instead of really clean partings, it's a little more natural partings, just kind of getting the hair separated, working the product through. The steps in the products are a little bit different, but it's not that different, you know? So um, I would definitely challenge everybody, not that you need to, um, but just having awareness of, of like all hair types, I think is important for all of us. So it's, it's cool to, uh, to just go in here and, and discover and learn, you know, this isn't so much about me teaching. This is Danielle teaching today. Um, obviously I have my thoughts and I, I can cut hair. Um, but you know, just going through here, making these discoveries with everybody, I think hopefully will push people to, you know, not be so afraid of texture. Well, you just have to remember that it's still hair. Yeah. It's still protein. It's still, you know, um, keratin and amino acids and lipids and all of those things. Yeah. So by knowing those different type of curl patterns, you can go in and kind of do your homework to find out which ones need a little bit more protein. Cause like if I put protein in this, my hair is going to snap right off. Okay. It doesn't need that. My hair needs moisture. Now, somebody that might need a little bit more of a protein treatment would be somebody that has, you know, more of that kind of B, that more spiral, little house on the prairie type of curl. Okay. <laughs> um, and even wavy hair types. But you have to be careful because say that you use something like cholesterol on that hair, that's so heavy of a protein that it's just going to weigh down that curl and stretch it out. This is literally people about your brush. Give me it. <laughs> I'm jealous. And then I'm not gonna lie, like the Dyson diffuser is now my favorite of all time. And I'm I don't get paid for it. Yeah. But the reason that I really like it, let me see if it shows up here. Yep. I am so bad with the technical stuff. So <laughs> with good. the Dyson, you can see that they actually have just the one hole right on the edge for the airflow. And then it has that entire circular pattern. So all the airflow is right to the center. Whereas most other diffusers, the hole is all around that little, little finger. And so it's blowing the hair every which way. Whereas this one's more concentrated to the center of the, the diffuser itself. So it oh, keeps the curl pattern nice. And especially when I'm going in, oh, another thing. <laughs> this is a discovery that I made a little while ago. Okay. Well, not a little while ago, but anyway. Um, instead of going in and just like pushing the diffuser right into the hair, just letting it sit on the outside. So that way the hair still has its, you know, like its length retention and its curl pattern. And you're not going to create any type of frizz by going in and disrupting anything. So just on the outside, letting that dry. And then once that's all set, then going in, lifting it up and giving it a little bit more drying on the interior. Very cool. Uh, Mary Ann's asking, can you cocktail the products together? I know this answer, but um, you go with some it. products. I've noticed that if you do that, it, the cream will beat up. You know, like yeah. um, it separates, it doesn't mix very well. So that's where it is better to layer one at a time, especially if you're dealing with, say, like a really, really heavy gel. Very cool. And then why wouldn't you use a wide tooth comb? That might be, might be based on me using a paddle brush at that moment.
Um, if I could answer, I'll answer that a little bit just because okay. this is so tight. Like some of these, uh, the buildup um, and the tangle of the hair, I wanted a softer tooth on the brush and something that gives a little bit. Uh, if I was going through the ends and everything, I would use a wide tooth comb 100%, but because I'm working, just trying to work these little tight hairs out and I don't want to stretch everything and a comb would just get stuck, I use the brush just to softly, and the same tool that Danielle showed you from Amazon, you could use that kind of thing as well. Um, this is the Ergo paddle brush that I'm using. Um, I actually wish I had the mini paddle brush with me, um, but I'm just using the, the last like four teeth on the brush here just to pull those little hairs out. Um, and just trying to do it as gentle as possible because obviously if this was a person, I don't want to hurt them. And second, I don't want to damage the hair uh, just working that out at the base. One thing I want you guys to definitely notice and that I'm noticing as well is that the curl is looking really good. As I'm like layering the uh, products in and keeping the hair saturated with uh, water, keeping it moist, uh, working it through, it definitely is looking good. You probably just skeeved out so many people with that word. <laughs> I, I know, I probably did. Uh, what else are you going to say, right? What else are you going to say? It's All right. true, though. Let's see, Jenny, uh, please do a quick product recap, Moose Defining Gel Curl Cream. All right, cool. So uh, real quick, we've got this guy here. This is the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Curl Refresh Foam. That's what I put on first. You don't need to do that. You should probably put this on first. Uh, the Lavender Taming Cream. There we go, Lavender Mint Taming Cream. Uh, that, and then I put on the Lavender Mint Defining Gel. Right there. And now I'm falling asleep. All right. So we're gonna start diffusing. I've got the Dyson tool, just like Danielle's talking about. Uh, we're gonna go, whoa, loud. We're gonna go low air, low low heat. Is that true or high heat? Um, I do medium heat and okay. low air flow. Cool. So we just crank it up. Uh, the two settings here, two on the heat, one on the air flow. And then um, I'm gonna tilt her head slightly back would you begin in the front or the back i'm gonna go in the back but what would you i do? usually start with the bottom okay just make sure we're on the same page daniel i mean you can make it up as you go <laughs> yeah that's usually what happens in my life the same yep so keys to diffusing i'm gonna turn my mic down a little bit what why don't you talk about it? I know you did a little bit, but why don't you just uh, go over it a little bit so I don't have to blow dry in their ears. So this was the part where I was saying that you can actually just let it dry a little bit on its own. Yeah. So it's not like you want to go in when it's totally dripping wet with the diffuser. Um, I would normally put somebody underneath a dryer for about like 15, 20 minutes or... I would let them air dry for a little bit because usually when I'm working on my curly people, they usually come in pairs. <laughs> so I'll just kind of bounce back and forth. And while one is drying, then I'm either cutting or applying some product or something on the other person. So um, with that, like I said, you want to diffuse it to where you're kind of just on the outside of the hair when it's first wet. So that way you can just not disturb the curl too much and you're getting a little bit more drying going on in the ends because we all know gravity takes hold and the ends are gonna get the majority of the moisture. And then later on, you can start working your way into the middle. But instead of just like getting right in there, and this is for longer lengths, now for a shorter length, like what Matt's dealing with right now, that I do go right up because I do want that hair to Kind of be a little bit closer to the head shape a little bit more okay. um and then also you can adjust so say that you find that it's getting a little bit of frizz you can adjust your temperature setting down to say like your lower speed or i'm sorry your lower temperature setting 
So that way it's not just like completely frying the hair out. And then my other favorite thing is some people think that the cool button is not something that you would use on curly hair, but you can because you really do want to set in that moisture. You want to lock in that curl pattern. And also, as you can see, any of those little white bits that you saw of the product, it's now getting absorbed into the hair. So once you do that cool button, once the, the hair is dry, you've now locked in all of those really great properties that are in the, the product itself. So with the Lavender Mink collection, you have tea tree, you have the lavender, you also have, um, what was the other product that's in there? Jojoba. And you have a bunch of different natural products that help to hydrate and also help with um, scalp health. Because a big thing with curly hair is making sure that the scalp is good because it's not like you're going to be washing it that often and there's going to be a certain amount of product build up. So I might be going off on another tangent. <laughs> Keep it up, Daniel. Keep it up. Well, for me, um, I actually use a black soap shampoo about twice a month. So that helps to get rid of a lot of the buildup that's on my scalp. I also use two different types of oils for my hair. So I have one that's specifically just for my scalp to help soothe it. But I do like the Lavender Mint Paul Mitchell oil that they have because that one, it's very light and it doesn't absorb into the skin and clog the pores like you would find with a lot of other products. So Basically, you don't want anything that has petroleum because then that's going to clog the pores. It's going to stop growth. It's also going to keep the hair, um, keep the, the natural oils from making their way down the hair shaft. So, God, there's so much. I don't even know where I can start right now. This is That's why I'm saying that I'm more <laughs> of a curly hair enthusiast because the more that you look into it, the more, the more you learn, the more things, yeah, the more that you learn and, and nothing's wrong. Right. Um, I'm trying to think of her name. There is a curly hair guru that, um, she's been around for a while and I'd actually ordered her book, but you know, being that we're in a pandemic, everything's taking forever. So I ordered it a month ago. I still haven't gotten it. Yeah. <laughs> That's definitely and, the case and a lot. Yeah. 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 But oh god, why why can't I remember her name? Um either way, she's amazing with what she does with the hair and she works with every single curl type. And she's one of those people that she actually has recipes for um all natural conditioning treatments. So if you're somebody that doesn't want to use a manufacturer product she actually gives a couple of different recipes that you can make up yourself That's cool. but personally i don't have time for that <laughs> i'm not doing that yeah <laughs> i tried it a while ago i like doing a um what you call it an aloe vera mask that was great and everything but after a while it gets to be a little bit tedious so my biggest recommendation would be to make sure that there's not too much alcohol in your products make sure there's no phthalates or it's basically salt that's going to dry out the hair no parabens and silicones has always been kind of like a hot topic when it comes to curls because i don't mind it on my wavier or curly hair but on my extra curly or coiled hair like mine I don't really like how the silicone just sits on the top of the hair and for me it's like my hair never dries if I'm using a silicone okay so pretty much everything that I use has got to be just silicone free okay. <laughs> so I do love the marula for that too oh nice that's a good tip yeah, the Marula hair mask, that was like a savior for me when I was transitioning. Because if I used products that were strictly for natural hair, my relaxed hair was just like, who done it and run? It just did not like it. 
So Marula was really great as a transition product and I can still use it now. So it's not like it's only for transition. Right. But it was like really nice and light. And the fact that you can do a pre-oil treatment. Ooh, that's another thing I could talk about. All right. <laughs> um, when it comes to really dry, really coily hair, um, putting an oil treatment on first before you even shampoo. Just going through, getting the oil worked through, separating the hair and getting out, you know, like finger combing through and getting out any of the loose hair because you're still shedding even though you're not combing it. Okay. So all of that hair gets stuck in there. And if you don't get rid of it before you shampoo, it'll just congeal into a giant dreadlock. Okay. So... Um, I usually like to do the oil treatment first and you can either do it for 10 minutes before you shampoo or you can do it for 20 minutes, 30 minutes or even overnight, depending on how dry the hair is. Now, obviously, when it comes to in the salon, you're going to want to do something between 10 and 20 minutes, which basically the hair has a 20 minute absorption rate and anything after that, it's just sitting there. So it's not going to hurt the hair. Perfect. All right. So um, pretty much dry. Hitting it with cool air. Okay. So now... We're going to move into uh, stretching it out a little bit, I would assume. Yes. Mm -hmm. So just oh, taking... another thing that you can do when you're drying is that if you feel like it's shrinking up too much, you can just grab it lightly and then just run the dryer over that section just to stretch it out without messing up the curl pattern. Okay. I like that. That's a good one. So I would grab the, the hair a little bit more like this and run the dryer over it a little bit. You're saying? Yep. Okay. So um, as I pull out the curl, I, I would go to a cream or some kind of uh, oil. What would you do? Mm -hmm. Is that what you would nope. do? No, exact same thing. Okay. Still on the same page, Danielle. Still on the same page. <laughs> that was a lot. I think that's one of the reasons that I love working with you guys is that seeing as how all of us have that Paul Mitchell background, yeah. we pretty much are always on the same page with whatever hair texture or, or anything that we're doing. Yeah, for sure. I would definitely say that that's, uh, you know, we definitely, Paul Mitchell had great training in the fact of teaching people just not only how to do straight fine hair, but textured hair as well. I mean, for the, for the most part. Always probably could have been more training, but. Well, I know before I left, that's when they were starting to work on like the curl line. They hadn't come out with yeah. lavender mates. Obviously, that's really new now. But yeah, they were one of the few companies that were just like, well, why aren't we tapping into this market? There are a lot of people going natural. Yeah, for sure. And to be honest, in this day and age where you have like so many you know, mixed babies and stuff like that, everybody should know how to do it because you really never know who's going to come in and say, hey, my kid needs their hair done and they might have straight hair. The kid might have hair like mine. Right. Yep. So I'm taking each individual curl and I'm just pulling it apart. Um, just to separate it. Some of these separate a little easier than others, to be honest. I think my prep work, my quick shampoo... Is shining through right now. Well, like I said, that would be a lot easier to take care of over at the sink. Yeah. With, you know, a good amount of conditioner in there. And, well, if you had my little trusty, dusty brush. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Gotta order one of those things. Yeah, finally, one that I'm not going to break all the bristles off of it. All right. The amount of times that I've walked around and it's like, what? What is this? Oh, it's a bristle for my brush. Oops. <laughs> all right. So starting to starting to expand a little bit. So I'm just grabbing little pieces here. And then you can also go in with a pick 
Okay. Just to really lift it up from the root. Matter of fact, I think I'm just going to sit here and fluff my own hair now that it's finally dry. There you go. <laughs> Might as well. Yeah, I think that this is like. I, th I hope everybody liked this class. I feel like um, for me, uh, the cool thing is I had, a, you know, quite a few questions um, that I feel like some of you guys out there might have had. Uh, maybe not people that work with this texture daily, but people that are interested in it. And uh, Danielle definitely gave some facts to anybody who could really listen to that. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Well, I enjoyed hopefully it. I didn't go off into too many different tangents. Not one bit, Danielle. <laughs> more information we can get on on the interwebs the better this is true guess what i'm gonna do a secret cut back here i saw that on youtube oh so it's a real thing okay. <laughs> yeah, so somebody just cut the knot right out they're like yeah there it goes hey you do what you gotta do yeah Sometimes. All right, let's see. Talk about the pick, what kind and how. Um, just a regular hair pick. So uh, I wish I had that down here with me. <laughs> but usually where it's just flat, has anywhere from like four to six little horizontal tongues going through it. So that way you can get underneath and just lift straight up you don't want to comb through the entire length of the hair because obviously you're going to comb out your curl but in order to just get a little bit of height through the top let me see too i think i might have a pick hold on okay you guys get a chance go follow danielle on instagram at the hands downs We'll find it. Uh, no, I did not have a pick, but we're going to act like this little foil comb is a pick. So what you're going to do is you're going to go underneath the hair and then you're just going to lift. So you're not going to comb all the way through. You're just going to lift up just those pieces at the root. So that way you're getting that little bit of extra volume. And the other thing that I do like to do once it's completely dry is go in with, and Matt already did it, but to go in with a little bit of the curl cream so that way it can moisturize, but also give you a little bit more added texture so that as you're fluffing it, it's, um, it's still pretty uniform, but um, it's got more of those little flyaway pieces because that cream will help to clump some of those curls. Yeah, we like those flyaway pieces, right? <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, I'm, I like, do. I'm like, all right, cool. That's good. Because I was like, oh, these are flying away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, everybody, everybody wants to make things, especially you, because I know you love making everything geometric and yeah. very uniform. Yeah. But this is basically free form. Okay. All of this right here. All right. So asymmetry, um, just different lengths and stuff like that, it can work. It's just all a matter of preference. Yeah, I like it. My biggest thing is when I've cut curly hair in the past, like, you know, what I think looks good and then what the internet thinks looks good are two different things. So I have a little bit of yeah. a... But if you really look at it, like a couple months back, I went to Afropunk in New York and I was, as a hairdresser, I was absolutely in love with every single type of hair that I saw. Okay. Because you had, you know, some that it was like a cloud. It was just 
fluffy and bouncy and just had like these little ripple waves going through it. Some of them, like me, is coily and, you know, it's just like little springs all over the head. So you had a little bit of, of everything. Then you have your, you're basically picked out and, you know, um, traditional afros right. and they can be heart shaped. They could be, you know, completely cylindrical. They can be a little bit more wedge shaped. So it's curly hair to me is one of those things that you're really expressing yourself. Yeah. You know, you're living big in 3D when you have that curly hair and you embrace it. That's so true. Very cool. All right. I'm going to finish the fringe just because I wanted to cut into that just a little bit more. And then this was exactly what I was talking about, where you can go in once it's dry and then just start to refine a couple of, of curls. It's not like you've got to go through and recut the entire thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, because I kind of already have the length that I want. But just being able to go in there and adjust the shape a little bit. And like for me, I kind of went on the natural journey with a couple of my salon guests and we've pretty much discovered things together and we shared tips and all of that. Um, there is a group, let me get their name right, Also, that I started following them a while ago. Can you? Sorry, uh, you were saying. No, just can you uh, say that book one more time too? Because uh, Charlene was asking uh, what the name of the book was. The one that you ordered. Uh, Lorraine Massey, finally, popped into my head. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, she's a curly hair guru, and she is absolutely amazing. And if you were to ever see this woman's curls, it is like, whoa, just unbelievable. It is hair goals. And I really like her because she's just she talks about curly hair in terms of just hair it's not yeah. okay you have you know a b c whatever it's just when you're touching it which every hairdresser we're all about touching the hair you know like i'm normally not a touchy feely type of person very kind of like whoa don't hug me don't come too close <laughs> social distancing was a thing for me before it had to be a thing <laughs> right yeah but when it comes to hair i'm i'm right there i'm just touching and it's like yeah you can touch my hair it's okay um, Sweet. but like I said, with Lorraine Massey, she's amazing with how she breaks everything down and makes it to where, you know, that you can figure it out and work with your client. And one thing that I've noticed is that with your curly hair clients, once you get one perfect, that's it. They spread like wildfire. They will tell everyone. <laughs> All right. I can't wait to hear what she's going to say to everybody. <laughs> right. And I mean, ask Brian, like he, when the curl line came out years ago with Paul Mitchell, he fell so in love with it and he actually started growing his hair back out and he's got those beautiful kind of baloney curls Yeah, and, you know, built up a huge curly hair following. True. Yeah. So true. All right. So, okay. 11, what all of you guys are saying, appreciating it. <laughs> Let's get the good vibes going here. Good vibes. And look at you. Yeah. Styling curly hair. I know. <laughs> Hate to go because this is so good, but I got to get ready to leave and head to the salon for a practice run. That's right. Kristen, get in that salon. All right. What are your Instagram names? So everybody post your Instagram names in the chat. And Danielle, where can everybody follow you on the gram? On Instagram. Um, at the hands downs. Okay. Let me see. And Let me see. I'm, I'm terrible, so I don't have Twitter or anything like that. <laughs> okay. But the hands down, everybody can follow you. Let me get me back on here. So, um, let's see. So what do you guys think? Did you like the class? Let us know in the chat here. Uh, if you have any other questions for Danielle, please post them. Um, Kristen, 
Have a great day. Uh, Instagram names are ready for So let's see. Um, Snowden, thank you so much. Uh, Sarah's saying, my ends always frizz. How can I stop it? What do you think, Danielle? Um, that's where I usually go in with a little bit more gel and curl formers. So um, there are what they call curl butter. Okay. It's a little bit thicker of a curl cream and it helps to encourage the curl formation. And then the gel over top of that will actually lock in that shape. Okay. And with that, make sure that you're letting it dry for that couple of minutes. So that way the ends don't frizz up. Cause I have the same thing where if I don't let my ends dri dry for a little bit and I go in and diffuse or I touch it, it's just instant frizz. Okay, cool. Uh, next one is, let me see here. How do I, how do you reshape your hair the next day without washing it? You, you know that one? Yes. Um, for what, oh, why didn't I bring this thing down here? <laughs> I have one of those huge <laughs> hair bonnets. Okay. So basically everything just goes up and back into almost like this tube. <laughs> okay. And... Um, I just take some of the, the curl cream and I just fluff that through my hair and then I just start pulling and fluffing. Very cool. I like it. Uh, Zelda is asking, coolest name ever, uh, is using... Yes, you, you loved it yesterday. <laughs> I know, I know. It's awesome. Plus, <laughs> hey, so, that's retention. That's retention too. My retention rate is good. Thank you for coming back. It's true. Uh, is using water to keep hair damp. Uh, what? I lost it. That's why I, I talk too much. Uh, is using water to keep hair damp drying to the hair, or would you use leave-in conditioner to keep the hair damp during cutting or styling? That's a good question. That is a good question. So um, that's where I like the conditioner, okay. because seeing as how with that product, it's like, what is it, five times lighter than air? It's been a while since I've had to think about that. I think that's what they say. But it's a very, very lightweight product and it's heat and water activated. So um, it's got awakui in it, which is hydrating for the hair, all of that. Very, very um, good for shine as well. So you can even put that in a spray bottle if you want, if you don't want to, you know, dull your scissors or mess those up by having conditioner on the hair when you're cutting. Okay. You can put a little bit into a spray bottle and that way it provides a little bit of extra slip. Cool. Awesome. All right. A couple more questions. Is there a difference between a wood, plastic, or metal pick, in your opinion? Again, it's just a, a matter of preference. Um, back in the day, <laughs> when I used to visit my relatives in South America, yes, they had the wooden picks. And um, they got caught in my hair. <laughs> okay. So didn't like those too much. Um, my dad had the, the original Afro pick with the metal tongs. I actually love that because that was really great for just like smoothly getting into the hair, scratching the scalp just a little bit, Yep. <laughs> but not getting it caught in my hair. And then sometimes I've noticed that some of the cheaper plastic picks, they just use a basic mold. So the edges aren't completely smooth. So it's just going out there and finding, you know, one that works for you. Like with this one, I really like it. And I'm trying to find if they have a pick because the plastic that they use on this is is it's almost like the the hard plastic combs okay so it's it's flexible but it's smooth okay yeah that's yeah. interesting um all right cool so i think that's how to follow danielle so i just put her instagram handle please all of you guys go follow danielle uh, and if you have any questions, go ahead and inbox me. I'm a little terrible at looking at it, but I will get back to you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, definitely, please go follow Danielle. Um, give her a shout out. Tell her thank you. Um, Danielle, I can't thank you enough. Uh, could not have done this class without you, for sure. So I uh, can't wait well, to have you thanks. back in the salon, in, in this building, and uh, we can do more. Oh, uh, we'll hear about it Share soon. more. I know, I know. Me too. Uh, hopefully this week we'll hear what's going on. One good thing is it's looked like a war zone outside because they haven't done anything to like the landscape. Or they hadn't mowed the grass. It was like two feet tall. Oh, Today, gosh. they just went through and cleaned it all up. So 
I don't know what they know, but they got to know something. So hopefully, All right. uh, you know, hopefully that's a good sign. Hopefully we'll be back soon uh, within the next couple of weeks at least. Um, but yeah, and you guys out there watching, there'll be a lot more of Danielle to come and the rest of the team, you know, we'll be doing classes uh, as soon as we get back in. Obviously I'm doing this every day. So now it's easier. I'll just pull Danielle in here and, uh, you know, we can do some stuff. So um, thank you again, Danielle, uh, very much. Thank I you. really appreciate it. Uh, again, go follow her uh, on Instagram. We killed it today on this show. This was probably one of the longest shows ever. And I think it was full of really, Sorry. really great information. No best information. So, uh, again, thank you, Danielle. I'm going to hang up here. Um, let me right. see. And I'll, I'll talk to you Bye. soon. I'll give you a call. Okay. All right. All right. Bye. See you, Danielle. All right, guys. So let me pop this here. So what'd you guys think? Did you, uh, did you have a good time? Did you enjoy the class? Uh, I really had, I was happy to have Danielle here. Um, I realized yesterday when I had to reach out to her to ask her questions when I was trying to get everything ready and prepped um, that I needed her here. So, um, so thank you, Danielle. Again, go follow her at the hands downs on Instagram. Um, Christina, I'm glad to hear that. Very cool. Uh, Ashley, thank you. Valerie, thank you so much. All right, cool. Awesome, Rosany. Glad to hear it. All right, guys. So one thing I want you guys to do uh, before, or as soon as we're done with this show, I want you to go download the FSE Now app. Um, we're, uh, if you haven't done it already, if you have done it already, go add some stuff to your profile so we can see your beautiful images on there. And also, if you're really loving using the FSE Now app, can you do me one favor? Go to the app store, whatever app uh, store you got it from, and leave a review so that we can get as many great reviews on there as possible. It just helps the rankings of the app uh, as well. Here is what the app is all about. Uh, let me share it with you guys. And then uh, I'm gonna say my goodbye. So here is the app. Thank you so much. Enjoy your day. And I'll see you guys tomorrow right here at 12 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for the next class. Thank you so much. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. Let me show you the way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, clip it, spray it, flip it. I woke up this way. It's going to be a great day. Chop it, flip it, spray it, flip it.